our day three on praying and fasting efficiently. Hallelujah. We are day 11 of fast. Hallelujah. But we've been speaking about praying and fasting efficiently. How to pray and how to fast efficiently. First of all, understanding what is praying, what is fasting, how to pray, how to fast. As we say, it, you need at least to get started. Hallelujah. Just begin and let God meet you on the way. Amen. Another thing we say it, is that you have to keep the good habits. You have to keep the good habit. Jesus had good habits. The word says he went to Mount Olive as he wants, as he usually did. So, you know, we are the sum total of what we learn from others, we learn from life, and those things through times becomes habits in our lives. And habits will keep you, will sustain you. You know, if you are a prayerful person, the only thing you do when you're in trouble is to pray. The only thing you do when you are joyful is to praise. Why? That's how we are. And actually, that is what the Bible is commanding us. You can see in the book of James chapter 5 from verse 14. James is a book written by Apostle James who teaches to the Hebrews the basics of Christian life. Amen. How Christians should be living. He gives them just basics. And among the things he tells them, he says, if you are sick, what you do in the church when you are sick? You call the elders. So that's how it should be. Hallelujah. And let them pray over you and anoint him, anoint him with all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And he carries on and says, um, carry on. I think it's in verse 13. Verse 13, 1, 3. So, these are good habits the church should be having. It, it says, if is anyone among you afflicted, when you are afflicted, there's one thing you do is to pray. When you are merry or happy, one thing you do is to praise. Can you see that? Hallelujah. And you don't just praise anything. You sing psalms. Hallelujah. You praise. You sing to the Lord. We need to keep and have good habits. We say that we need to learn to pray long hours. Hallelujah. Praying long hours means you need to know also how to, I don't know if I can say, play around, partition your prayer, the different parts of your prayer. Even the Our Father that Jesus has been teaching is, is partitions. You can break it and make it a long one hour, even even more prayer. Learn to hear the voice of God. I think we said it first day we started this teaching. Learn to hear the voice of God. For you to hear, recognize, and discern the voice of God, there's only one way. Every child recognizes his father's voice because he stays long enough around his father to be used and acquainted to his father's voice. It means through a life of prayer, you begin to discern. Through a spiritual life, you begin to discern the voice of God through everything you see, you hear, you dream, you think of. So prayer. Word meditation. Fast and so on. Then you understand the languages of God that he speaks in many ways he can speak through an event hallelujah he can speak through so many things today uh, 
uh, there's an incident that happened. So I jokingly asked my kid because somebody came. I parked the car. I was busy I'm looking for something in the car and suddenly, boom, somebody bumped me. Then I just looked and I saw an old man, 80. If, he, if that man is young, he should be 85. And his wife, very old. The wife cannot even hear properly. She has to scream because she thinks when you speak, you are speaking not uh, loud enough. So I was quiet. And I kept on searching whatever I was looking for. And then he came to me to apologize. I said, yeah, be peaceful. Just go. No, sorry, I say, sir, there's no problem. You can go. Then he left. And I finished what I was doing there on the way to another place with the kid. I said, okay, kid, do you think God knew what was happening? Some say yes, some say no, some say, but all of them came to one conclusion, yes. I said, okay, let me give you a scripture. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10, he says, he announced the things, the end of the things before the beginning. Isn't it? From the ancient time, the things that are not yet done. I say, so God knew. Then I say, okay, if God knew, why did he allow this old man to come and bump me? And they all laughed. There was no answer. Amen. Then I kept on driving and then I say, okay. Then my daughter said, no, daddy, I think God wanted to test your patience. <laughs> and I ask her, according to you, was I patient or not? They say, oh, daddy, you are very patient. I say, praise God, I was patient, but I'm left with a bump in my car. What does now God says about it? Then she said, no, you know, daddy can bless you more than what you can expect. I said, okay, I'm expecting a Defender, last model, because that's my, my, the car that I like. I like 4x4. Four four. I'm expecting a Defender. They said, no, that is going to give you more, even a Ferrari. I said, no, Ferrari are not cars, they are tools. Tell God I'll be happy with a Defender. Even if he can give me more what I'm expecting, let him start first with a Defender. So, that was um, a bit the talk. But what I'm trying to say is, Sometime God can speak through dreams, through events, through realities, through many ways. So we need to be able to discern. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that God was saying something at that time. No, I'm not saying that. If he was, I didn't get it yet. Amen. But God can speak through events. He can speak through so many realities that happen in your life. So not only you need to learn to hear the voice of God through everything, you need to be able to discern. And for that, you need to spend much time close to your Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. One more thing we say, you must pray with expectation. If you are really serious about your prayer, it means you must i can't ask you for 10 rand and just go away i'll say oh were you were you really were you really serious when you were asking me or not you are asking me for something i just put my hand in the pocket and you are gone next thing amen if you are serious as you pray you must be expecting something hallelujah the bible says the lame man i think is in what is it act three four Four. The word says, is it three? Yeah. Now they went to, to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain layman from his mother was carried with the late daily to get out of the temple. I called the beautiful and okay. Seeing that Peter and John was about to go to the temple, he was asking for an alms. Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. He gave heed to them. What is the next word? Expecting. Hallelujah. Expecting. You must have expectations. Is verse what? Five. Hallelujah. You must have expectations when you are praying. You can't pray without expecting. If you are praying, 
and you are not expecting it means you are not even having faith in what you are praying for or for what in god for what you are praying for hallelujah next thing i said be focus hallelujah be what focus what is being focused focus is to concentrate all your energy all your mind into what you are doing as you are praying concentrating what energy mind everything into what you are doing why because focusing maximizes results hallelujah focusing maximizes results focusing is the ability to concentrate all power all means all resources into one thing hallelujah focusing you see today i'm saying it differently again amen focusing is the ability to concentrate all power all means all resources into one thing in order to have maximum results one of the elders that i respect a lot um, a senior colleague is a doctor he said to me one thing he said concentration is the big virtue and asset for the successful brother can you say what i said again i forgot concentration is the big virtue and asset for the successful the people who are successful in life they are focused amen there is a president in a certain country in a certain place who say he who carry x on his head doesn't fight hallelujah mutame mamaki abundagate asonagate hallelujah because he's focused on what he's carrying it was a way to tell the people i don't have time for you hallelujah it's only us who have time for TikTok, for whatsapp for x for 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 what for gossip the latest gossip in town for youtube hallelujah for the most stupid video clip on YouTube when somebody is criticizing another pastor or is criticizing another musician or is talking about this musician is greater than this musician you know we really live on different planets yeah are you with me ha huh? Saturday I'm with this colleague at work and he's busy on his phone and you look at his I don't know, his idol, if I can call it a musician. A Congolese musician. Now they were fighting over filling a stadium. I just kept quiet. Hallelujah. Because some, some of the things that people will call intelligent, you might call it stupid. But you won't understand. They won't understand you. You won't understand them. It's not their fault. It's not your fault. You are not in the same world. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, every Saturday after a certain uh, TV show, we all went to the street and discussed and argued about. I'm like, wow. The devil can possess generation. Yes. Let us learn to be focused as we pray. As you are fasting, be focused. Try to avoid distraction. Try to avoid anything that makes you losing your focus. Friends activities it doesn't have to be a sin for it to make you losing your focus no amen not necessarily not necessarily not necessarily not necessarily you need to know yourself as you pray you need hard disposition. Hallelujah. 
today I would like to add one thing that I just mentioned now identify your enemies in prayer or identify the enemies of prayer identify the enemies of prayer just the way I said it I can even stop you without without giving any explanation it's self-explanatory hallelujah identify the enemy of prayer sometimes it's laziness hallelujah work on it sometimes it's friends avoid them in times of prayer or before prayer there are some people that call you just when you're about to start praying but they don't know you're about to pray hallelujah maybe it's the time they are free but it's not the time you are free because if you call them the time they want to do something important they might not respond to your call hallelujah phone calls put your phone on fly mode hallelujah identify you will start praying and then suddenly the, the guy who who owes you 35,000 rents you've been looking for him for seven months <laughs> will you take the call or not hallelujah because if you don't take the call, you might disappear again. Mama Rita, seven months you've been looking for that lady and suddenly she calls 35,000 rand. What do you do, Jody? You answer, isn't it? Guess what? She just said, I would like to apologize if we can extend the timing of that thing. So <laughs> you have wasted your prayer time. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, and then you say, ah, the devil played me. No, you played yourself. Amen. You played yourself. You know, sometimes when God wants to bless you, he just wants to bless you. I was in retreat for like four or five days or so. They were looking for me to promote me. And my phone, I was not available. Can you imagine? They were calling and calling and calling and calling. I was not responding. They were looking for me to promote me. Martin. Until one of the colleagues called me and said, hey, I'm told you are moving to another department. I said, I don't know anything about moving to another department. My clinical manager had to call me himself. Finally, when I was available. Doc, what is this? You don't want to take this post? I said, boss, what post? You have been appointed from the 1st of April or what, what into. Say, boss, I didn't know. Thank you. When are you resigned? Say, boss, I'm on leave. But when I come first thing, I will happily take that position. They were, they were calling me to get the position. So if really your blessing is yours, it will look for you. Amen. Amen. What we call in Lingala, li bakuna zelo. But in the sense... Eh? I don't know Libaku in English. In the saint, suddenly diamond diamond comes. Not stone, diamond in the sand. You don't dig. You just walk and boop, boop. Eh, what's this? The wife of your life, the husband of your life, the business of your life, the everything of your life. Yeah. The sons of Israel, they say, when our captivity was over we were like them that were dreaming there are things when it's happening you think you are dreaming but you're not dreaming it is true amen you ask somebody can you pinch me just to make sure i'm not sleeping you're not sleeping praise god so you must identify the enemies of prayer internet Hallelujah. Especially Facebook. You just open your phone, you see already 1,600 likes. You are the one who posted that video, but you want to look at it again. But you posted it. You made it yourself. Hallelujah. Because you see one point something likes. Sometime you are distracted here. Your thoughts. Hallelujah. 
you are praying but you are thoughtful of many 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 other things ah this time Martin they must be in Cape Town I'm sure they are in waterfront but you are praying Kurabaraba Sanduru Mm, there must be in waterfront with Gi. I should have gone with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. I bless your name. Mm, those, uh, what do you call this? A bronze. Ish, I missed it. So, for one hour, one hour, you have tortured yourself in your mind, but you were praying. Amen. Because they left you. That's why you need to set yourself in prayer. That's, it's a way already. You know when you are setting yourself, this position. Remember we spoke about this position. When you set yourself in prayer, that's when you are removing already the distraction. You put your phone on fly mode. You, you, you do this and you do that. This position. Hallelujah. The other word for this position or setting yourself is configuration. Amen. You are configured your, you know, it's like your phone. You want it to be, some phones are in French, some phones are in English, isn't it? Eh? It's a configuration you choose. So when you want to pray, you also do a configuration. You configure your mind and yourself into prayer. Praise God. So first thing I want, I, I, I'm, I'm sharing with you today is identify the enemies as you pray phone calls a big pap big fufu just before you pray especially that pap that has a milli milli inside it's 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 it, 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 uh, what's the word it has a uh, it has a what is this this effect when you say that makes slips doctors help me It's it's sedative. Eh? It's it. that big pop hot with milli in. It sedates you after eating. With your hands, your hands are still dirty. Ah, uh, you know what I'm talking about, eh? <laughs> you know, eh? The pop becomes dry in your hands, and you are still sitting there <laughs> like a a python who has swallowed. Uh, what a goat he just stays there he will die there you just like that you even snoring so you can't even pray why because you have induced somnolence to yourself hmm? it sedates you it tranquilizes you <laughs> brother there are things you must avoid hallelujah even after the fast, take uh, warm water. Just a bit, brother. <laughs> Just a, you don't go for a big pop. <laughs> That's why after you eat, after the fast, your heart is beating fast. You're out of breath because your stomach is in shock. It receives four kilos of food after fasting the whole day. Amen. Just a bit of tea. Just a bit. Just to dilate a bit. Because when you just put that big stone of pop, boom. Your stomach is in shock. Hey! Hallelujah. Your heart is beating fast. You can't breathe because your body is trying to adjust from zero. <laughs> oh my God. Hallelujah. I went on the scale yesterday and I lost 4 kg. I was happy. Hallelujah. Then I say, ah, maybe we should go 31 days. Ah, I know some of you will abandon me on the way. <laughs> Pastor, go yourself. <laughs> identify, identify the enemies of prayer. Hallelujah. At that time, the devil will even remind you your ex-girlfriend. Mm. He will remind you your ex-boyfriend. He remind you that day you went to Monte Casino. Out of nowhere. Hallelujah. That day you went to the beach. Out of nowhere. You wonder where does it come from. He just want to throw something into your mind to distract you. So that 
And you also, you just take that thought, depend on how sweet is that souvenir. You take it and you begin to build on it. Hallelujah. While you are praying. Can you imagine that? That guy doesn't want you to pray. You never thought about that person. You never thought that. He just come like that. These are the enemies when you pray. Identify them. As soon as they show, kill them. Amen. They call you, you reject. They call you, you reject. They reject, you reject. You switch off the phone. Amen. Call again. Hallelujah. The reason why you don't switch off, you keep that enemy alive. Next thing, keep doing the right thing. What is the right thing that you are doing? And yeah, keep doing the right thing. It must not be a one-off. It must be a lifestyle. Keep doing the right thing. Jesus said, when you pray, when you give, when you fast. He didn't say, if you pray, if you give, if you fast. Hallelujah. He said, when you pray. Can I have that scripture, Brother Martin? He said, when you pray. When you fast. When he, when he say when, he assumes that you are prayerful he assumes that you are fastful he assumes you are given full hallelujah he didn't say if he said when so he assumes it's in the book of matthew he assumes that there are times where you are fasting he assumes that there are times where you are giving there are times where you are praying so he said when you pray this is how you pray when you fast this is how you fast when you you see when, when, when. Moreover, when you fast, be not like the hypocrites who have a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces. They do what? Like in the old time. Mm. What? You are fasting. Amen. What is a fast? No bathing, no brushing the teeth for a week. So you are fasting in the way of the Old Testament. It's not a fast. It's not a fast. It's not a fast. It might be a personal discipline. Okay, don't call it fast. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, Jesus said. Jesus said, you are putting, you are put, you are making things for people to carry that yourself won't even able to carry. You are making the gospel too difficult. Hallelujah. Now we are fasting. I'll not cut my hair for. For, 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 for 10 months. That's your problem. Amen. If you want to look like I don't know who, that's your problem. Right will be coming from your head. There. But when you first anoint your head, meaning perfume your face, wash, perfume your head, wash your face. Okay. Why did Jesus didn't just say wash yourself, bath yourself? If we put this scripture in context, the Hebrew, most of the time, mostly, because of the scarcity of water, they were bathing once a week. Hallelujah. There was no water. They were washing the feet and the hands and the face. But on the Sabbath day, they will take a shower. They will bath completely because water was not something accessible like today. That's only the simple explanation of it. Okay? right so keep doing the right thing keep on praying keep on pushing look in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 what does the word says the word says let us not be weary in doing the right thing do not be tired of doing the right thing because in due season you will reap if you faint not. Keep on praying. Don't give up on praying because when the time arrives, you will reap what you have been sowing in your prayers. Amen. No, oh, I'm tired. We prayed, we prayed. I'm tired. Yes, Apostle Paul said, don't be tired. Do not be weary. Give us an amplified translation. 
Let us not lose hearts and grow weary. You see, men ought to pray and not faint. Jesus said that also. Because sometimes situation, reality will, what's the word? Wear you out, warn you out. What's, what's the English? Wear you out. Okay? Worn out. You understand what I'm trying to say? You become tired. Exhausted. Are you with me? Situation. Sometimes just the delay in answer. And God say, I'm never late. <laughs> Sometimes the delay in answer. Not because God is late. Because God is waiting for the time. He's waiting for what? The time. So keep on praying. Imagine if the sixth time Elijah say, ah, doesn't work. I'm tight. The rain would have never come. John Knox, yeah, John Knox, pray for a revival. Almost his entire life for a revival in Scotland. When that thing arrived, it arrived. Amen. At such a point that he was among the most respected. Once, I think one of the queens said, I respect this man because his prayers are more powerful than all the army. Amen. Do not lose hearts and go weary. Do not faint in acting nobly and doing right. Keep doing right. Because in due time, at the appointed Kairos season of God, we shall reap. But we shall reap only if we do not lose and relax our courage and faint. If Apostle Paul said that, it's because he knew Probably he went through things and reality showing that sometimes life challenges, life realities, delay answers and so on can discourage you. You can pray for a church growth for, for 10 years and it doesn't happen until you give up. Actually, the devil wants you to give up and he will help you giving up mm. until one day somebody is raised from the dead. And the next day, you start having 10 services. You look for a bigger room. Hallelujah. It will not come the way you think it will come. It will come the way God wants it to come. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us when we pray. We pray according to our cliche. But is our cliche the cliche of God? Not always. Hallelujah. Let's try the CEV if it has something better for us. Don't get tired helping others. You will be rewarded when the time is right. If you don't give up. You say it, it's the same thing. If you don't give up. So in other words, he say, don't give up doing what is right. Let's look at the God word translation. And then the good news Bible. We can't, oof, I love this. We can't allow ourselves to get tired of living right way. I can't allow myself of being tired. Do you know when you get tired, how is it called? Huh? Depressing. You are depressed. Huh? Oh man, I can't take it anymore. I prayed, I prayed. Nothing has happened. Is God hearing me? Is God hearing my prayer? I pray for divine intervention. I still see the same thing. Ah, nalembinanga. I'm tight. Hmm? Mm. No, my sister, eh, let's pray. What do you say? Rapela. Eh? Ah ah, kekatet. I'm tired. Amen. And the devil will make sure that you get tired. Bad news show you the wrong people who failed. You also fail. And you say, I can't. But the word says, we can't allow ourselves. So things will allow us. But us, we don't have to allow ourselves. <laughs> ah, yes. You say, no, brother, understand. Ten years, ah, even God understands. Ah, brother, no. Hallelujah. Somebody show, send, send me something on... on, on, on. <laughs> Ah, people, <laughs> you know, they put this 
image of somebody, a white man with beard, you know, that image of Jesus people have. And the other one is standing next to him, he's speaking to him. Now they put comments. The guy say, in Lingala, he said, Explicate yes, super poem. Nangai, you mongo will be a zambe. So let me translate for you. The guy on is commenting the picture. He says, He explained in the picture, you see a man talking to that Jesus. He said, I explained to Jesus all my situation. Jesus himself, Hey, my God. <laughs> so you see. People will allow you to stop and to get tired. But Paul said, let us not allow ourselves. Even if you say, no, brother, I understand you. Sister, I understand you. You have done your best. You have prayed. You have pushed. Everyone will understand. You see, they are helping you. They are allowing you. They are under you. No, you don't understand yourself. I, I refuse to understand myself quitting. Amen. We can't allow ourselves to get tired of living the right way. Certainly, each of us will receive everlasting life at the proper time. If we don't give up. Amen. What left? Good news. What does it say? Give us good news. Keep doing the right thing. Hallelujah. My son once said, Daddy, me too, I'll have a brain. I'll be selling clothes and my brain will be never give up. I said, oh, that's good. Amen. Let us not become tired of doing good for if we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest. Keep doing the right thing. Keep praying. If No matter how long it takes. You see this widow, how many years he pray? Anna. Huh? I think she was around 70 years. Her husband died. She was still young. Just She married very young and the husband died. Her entire life, she was just praying and interceding until she saw Jesus. Hallelujah. Until she saw Jesus. What is this other one? Simeon. Was it Simeon? Simeon also. He waited and he waited and he waited and he waited until the day they went to, to, to present Jesus to the temple. He saw the Messiah. He said, ah, now I can go because I received the promise that I will not die until my eyes have seen the Messiah. There are things you must see before you go. You can't go unless you see them. That's why don't give up. Keep on praying. Keep on speaking. Keep on declaring. Keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Hallelujah. Because in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Amen. Next thing. As we pray. You must develop a life of personal and cooperative prayer. Of what? Personal and cooperative prayer. So, build a life of prayer where you pray alone. Build a life of prayer where you pray with people. Uh, I would like to tell you, we have um, all these messages available. You can, one, get them on YouTube. Amen. You go on YouTube every single day is on YouTube. Oracle Church Ministries. Amen. Subscribe. You'll have them all. Another way you can have it, you can have it on WhatsApp. Okay. You can have it on WhatsApp. You can listen to it in your car. You can listen to it just on your earphones. And it helps you. And as I said to you, sometimes you can pray listening to something until you take off. You disconnect now from what you are listening and you continue yourself. You were just creating the atmosphere. You must create 
an individual prayer life. The word of God says in the book of Mark 135, Jesus will go pray in a solitary place early in the morning when it's still dark. So Jesus had a personal life. You must not be a lone ranger. You must pray with other people. But trust me, praying alone build you, make you strong, give you a character. Hallelujah. It will specially develop your intimacy with God. Praying alone, you develop your intimacy. Because when you pray alone, it's only you and God. Hallelujah. You develop how to enter into the presence. You develop how to speak and listen to God. You develop your private time with God. It is very important. It is very important. I can tell you, it's difficult to see a prayerful person who doesn't have character. It builds your personality. Hallelujah. It builds your personality because you need to build a personality. Hallelujah. You need to build a character. Even in the kingdom of, in the spirit realm, you must build. Paul, I know. Is this what? Acts 16? Around there. 16 or 19. Paul, I know. Jesus also. But you, who are you? Amen. That is when the sons of Sceva were trying to cast out a demon from a person. And as they were casting out the demon, they were saying, we cast you out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. It's too long. Amen. The evil spirit answered. Give us maybe from verse 13. Are you reading with me? Then certain vagabond. <laughs> Hallelujah. Certain vagabond Jews. People are wandering left and right. They took upon them to call over those who had demons. So they called the possessed people. Come, 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 come. We will deliver you. And they used the name of the Lord Jesus, saying to the demonized person, to the demon, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, chief of the priest, which did so. The evil spirit answered and said, I know Jesus. Paul, I know. Where now? Who are you? Hallelujah. What did he do? The men in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, prevailed against them. They fled out of that house naked and wounded. Brother, give us the amplified of this scripture. The word says, The men in whom the evil spirit dwelt leaped on them, mastering the two of them. He mastered them, he PhD them. <laughs> Amen. And he was so violent against them that they dashed out the house, stripped naked and wounded. Amen. The demon knew Jesus. The de demon knew Paul. But the demon didn't know them. Now, does the demon know you? Huh? Do they know you? Do they know you? How do they know you? What reputation do you have? Hmm? This is a proof that you can build a reputation in the kingdom of darkness. We know ah, that guy, please leave him. Not him. Amen. When the witches are talking and they mention their name, say, hey, please forget about that guy. We tried him last week. We nearly died. Hmm? Hmm. I had an uncle when he was going to the village in the 80s all the witches were running to the bush all of them because he will pick them up just by looking at them all the demon possessed people 
they were running to the bush because the demon in those people didn't want to be cast out. When he leaves the village and come back to Kinshasa, then they go back to the city there. Hallelujah. That's what I call reputation. Hallelujah. Ah. We have seen a lot of testimony. People have been afraid of doing whatever. Why? You'll see people say, I'm a winner. Don't play with me. I'm a winner. In Nigeria. You know why they say so? Because they pray at Winner's Chapel. And they know Winner's Chapel, when they bring something to pray about, things happen. So you are afraid to, 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 to do something evil to a winner because when he's going to go there and pray, maybe. Hallelujah. Reputation. I was there 2013 December. Then I lost my phone. And the guy I was with said, chill, you'll find your phone. I never found it. But he said to me, you'll find your phone. And I believe I never got it because I didn't stay long enough. I was traveling the day that was coming. So on the last day, the bishop stood up. I said, every year we have our Shiloh, what, what, but some other people, they come here to steal, they come to do their job. I want to tell you, today is the last day of Shiloh. By 12, if you don't give back, what is not your day, 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 hey? By 12, they closed the service. Brother, they were big baskets, tall like this, round, big, big. I can get inside, like 250 liters, big like that. There are like six or seven or eight, seven entrances. In every entrance, there were baskets. As we were walking out, they were full. People were putting back. And I said, hey, why are they afraid? That friend said, huh? Yeah, you still, you're a dead man. Then he told me the story. These people kidnap children because they're doing human trafficking. And they sell them. Whatever they do. So on that Shiloh, 2011, or I don't know which year before, I went only once. Uh, that little girl eight year old was kidnapped and the bishop spoke and he said i give you a month to bring that child you don't bring that child you are dead hallelujah of course the child never came the year that followed somebody else brought the girl with a vhs cassette you remember those cassettes by that time, he was sick, he was blind, he was dying, but he, brought, he sent back the girl asking for forgiveness. So people saw what can happen there when the bishop says something, be careful. Same has been in Dausa. Amen. You have seen, what, you have seen one of, of his sons, Bishop Sonny, was here, 2017. By the grace of God, he will come again. Amen. Bishop Sonny was witness in Nigeria when they wanted to shift the airport in Benin City. They shut down the military hospital, they shut down many facilities to extend the um, military runaway, railway or whatever they call it. And they went to the they went to Bishop uh, Archbishop Idawasa. They said you need to close the church, go somewhere else, because we need this space. He said no ways. They said no, you have to say I'm not going anywhere. They said we're gonna give you I don't know 12 million of what naira or whatever that time. He said I'm not moving. My spiritual father T L Osborne pray on this land. If you give me another land, can I take the prayer? I can't. I'm staying here. The governor said we give you one month 30 days you don't move we come we break everything he said the, f the person who gonna touch the wall is a dead man it was all over the news they're expulsing a, a bishop um it was from the church what 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 and it was all over on d-day 
this poor bulldozer driver he goes to break the wall as soon as that device from the the tractor touched the wall no one knows what happened no one knows the thing turns around the man died and the president said to the governor you killed that man he does have told you but you still sent somebody you are fired <laughs> he was fired and bishop sonny said they are the one three years down the line who prayed for him when he came to ask for forgiveness bishop said something i, I still don't under, i will understand maybe one day the dowser took that man that governor he said come uh, you see this young man among them bishop sonny and other colleagues they'll pray for you they are very anointed and this and that and that and that so they'll pray for you and then he called them say pray for this guy i cannot undo my prayer i will not undo my own prayer so you pray for him he left they prayed for him they prayed for him and then a while after he came with the bible he offered the guy say come let's go a few days after the guy was restored into what position i don't know he was restored you see they must know you that man in Nigeria was known when they were calling Papa. When Papa speak, he has spoken. Be careful. The kingdom of darkness must know you. But how do they know you? Lazy, giving up, or ferocious, like a lion. Amen. You must build a reputation. A, rep, a reputation. So, when you go through personal prayer life it builds you it builds your intimacy with god it makes you stronger it gives you character it makes you tough amen but learn also to build a corporate prayer time with the church when we have prayer night when we have fast when we have it builds what it builds your endurance if i pray alone i'm more likely to pray less time but if i pray with other people your noise your prayer your courage your something encourages also me because what i see enters me also if gi is not tired why will i be tired amen i see gi being tired but he stand up and is walking around so me too i can stand and walk around amen when you pray with people if gives you endurance proverbs 27 17 says iron sharpen iron like men like men sharpen the continents of his friends you see the lord jesus was not afraid to pray alone don't be afraid to pray alone learn to pray alone i have a friend who went to pray alone into places i don't know even today if i'm still gonna go alone and pray there i don't know if i go I think I'll be thinking while I'm praying. Amen. There's this movie about, um, a Nigerian movie about um, Bishop David Oye, the poor they made. It's a beautiful movie, just that there are some scene that they put in the movie is not good for kids. So I could never, I saw it, then uh, I said no. But the movie on its own. And if you know Bishop David Oye, the poor, testimony you will understand that the movie speaks about him when they bought the land i went there today they call it canon land it was a forest but it was a forest of witches and evil spirits at night those who are passing outside on the road they will hear like human voices screaming inside but you don't know what it is everyone was afraid at such a level that the chief in the land sold it to him okay they sold it to him saying one thing that we used to put in our stamp la marchandise vendue n'est ni remise ni reprise ni rechange whatever we sold we don't exchange we don't take it back we don't know we, we don't reimburse no you take it you take it when he bought it they said to him Please, if it gives you problem, don't come back to us. Don't come back for your money. Do whatever. Sell it to somebody else, but don't come back. 
So he bought the land. You know what he did first thing? Hmm? He went to pray all night prayer alone. <laughs> he said himself, he prayed. You know, there are some people in life, you must listen to them. They'll make you drunk with testimonies. These are the people who, who made me drunk with testimonies to the point where I will hear a demon spirit screaming and laughing and I say, do your job. Me too, I'm doing my job. My job is to sleep. Hallelujah. He prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed. And you know so many voices. And sometimes he said, you'll hear like monkeys screaming. At some point he said, shut up. And it went quiet for a moment. And he said, ah, oh, the son of God has spoken. They are quiet. And he prayed. Another time he went to pray alone. In a mountain. For three days. He said, it didn't take blanket. It, it, just the way it was. It rained on him. The sun came, dried him, and then called every... He was there. Three days. Hallelujah. There are some experiences in life. You know when somebody has been into war, three times, seven war. You know, I went to Iraq, six tour in Iraq, nine tour in Iraq. When you come back, you look at these people with the little knife. You say, these are toothpick. You can slap them and kick them and go. Why? Because you have been where action has been happening. Am I talking to you? When you build a personal prayer life, you build, you strong spiritually. You understand? Of course, you don't go alone. You go with others. But first of all, you strong spiritually. You know, he said he prayed for three nights in that forest. That's another place he went to pray. But he said the first night he went to pray, he saw a snake falling from a tree. Bah! He saw the snake. He said, hmm. In the Garden of Eden, there was also a snake. So God must be here. You see, that man has his own way of interpreting. No, he has some sarcasm. I don't know if I can call it sarcasm. But I like it. You understand? His wife had a threatened miscarriage. He come from preaching the word. He get home and the wife is bleeding. He said, darling, I'm bleeding. He said, what bleeding, what bleeding? You have excess of blood. The body is just, you know, releasing a bit of excess of blood. He said, there can't be miscarriage in my house. Can I have my food, please? He said, they gave him food and they never talk about that miscarriage until the baby was born. They have to go deliver. They say, no, they need to do C-section because the baby is a transverse position or something like that. He said, no C-section. No, but you know, he said, no C-section. He refused. Amen. He said, give me a moment. He went. He said, son, turn. Amen. Whether it's science, whether it's contraction, whatever you call it, that son turned. Amen. Yes. Is it luck? It's a good luck. Let's reproduce many of them. For those who don't believe. Amen. You must learn to practice things until it becomes your part of life. Until you build a repeated. You start, just get started. Declaration, action, laying hand on your kid. You lay hand today, you lay tomorrow. Just start little by little. In five, six years, not six months just. If you apply yourself, you are somewhere. Amen. You are somewhere. You are already somewhere. His second son is born. They say he has jaundice. He said, I won't even look at it. Of course, the child, had, he did not deny the jaundice. He said, I will not look at it. It will just clear. Of course, it's naturally clear because it's a natural process of the body. Amen. He takes the boy to the doctor. The boy is having fever. And the doctor says, of course, he's eight months. He's teething. When they're teething, around eight months they're having this you know saliva come from the mouth and fever he said no he can't he said no it's it's science says so he said no if the bible doesn't say so i cannot accept it you see the mindset medically speaking we understand it's happened he said no i will check if god said so in the bible are you with me so coming back to prayer Actually, it's prayer who builds in you such kind of mindset. You begin to think 
otherwise because you are too much in the presence of God God begin to influence you as we just say iron sharpen iron amen God begin to change your way of thinking praise God praise God what what do you lose when we were building this stage for the first time uh, Micah did not deliver everything we wanted and you know Micah closed at 6 you know people when they say we close at 6 we close at 6 isn't it then I checked the account and look at it but Emmanuel not everything no pastor they forgot I said go and ask them to give it to you pastor they're closed already I said it will be open go no but pastor they're closed already it's past 6 I said it's not my problem they are the one who has forgotten you just go and they must give it to you go amen he who doesn't want find excuses he who want find what reason me i just declared by faith i say go normally even if he found them open they could not deliver to him he had to come the next morning but guess what he got there they gave it to him what did i lose even if it was closed or they say we will not what, what would i lose nothing but we needed them the same night so that the next morning, 6 o'clock, Simon will come and work and do the stage. Amen. Mindset. No, is the, is the what? Is the, the closing date. It's fine. I will go in that closing date. Hmm? <laughs> uh, you must be close to certain people. Another testimony. The man is traveling. And as he's traveling, they miss the flight. Or they came, they miss a flight. Now here, this businessman is traveling, but he's having his private jet. He's going to Lagos or whatever. So now Bishop send his PA. Say, go tell that guy if he can give us a lift. Because our own is was it Idausa? No, no, no. He said, give us, ask him to give us a lift because our own has not yet arrived. But if he can give us a lift. You understand? It means I didn't buy mine yet, but I want you to give me a lift. The guy went. I said, no, there's a bishop there. Bishop Edepo. He said, this and that. The guy laughed. He said, come. He gave them a lift. And a few years after, they bought their own one. Amen. Because he believed. Because they believed. You must have your own testimonies. And that mindset, you build it. The more you, you close to God, the more you believe crazy things, the more you speak crazy things, the more your character changes, the, the more you see things differently, the more you speak things differently. Oh no, they closed. No, they didn't close. It's just a delay. Hmm. This prayer, I learned from him. God, there is a way out. God, there is a way. There must be a way out. There must be. Show me the way out. And that day I was stuck. No solution. That's how I prayed. Lord, there is a way out. I know that. Show me the way out. The next day I had a way out. Amen. So, you can also pray that way. If you believe that God can do with you the way he did. Hallelujah. So learn to build personal life. Learn to build corporate life by praying with others. Amen. Next thing. Always seek for more spiritual depth. Depth. When I say depth, going deeper. Hmm? Not prophecy. Go deeper, Papa. Go deeper, Papa. No, not, not that. Yourself, as you are praying in your prayer life, seek more spiritual depth and result as you pray. It means as I pray, I want to go deeper in the presence of God. Amen. 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 Why don't you want to pray and and seek that depth, desire that depth of prayer where you begin to hear the voice of God the way I'm speaking to you. Can God not do that? 
Why don't you desire that? Amen. Hallelujah. That as you pray, you enter into the prophetic. As you pray, you begin to have visions like you are watching a movie. Amen. Amen. Why don't you, why do you want just to pray those normal prayers where we want to pray, let us close our eyes and then you close your eyes. Oh, Father God, I want to thank you. Amen. So you just close the eyes. I wish you close the eyes to see something, not closing the eyes of closing the eyes. Be not the only reason I close eyes is not to be distracted. Amen. Uh, the way we were taught in, in Catholic Church and all these things, it, it was a good thing. When you close the eyes, you are not distracted by your friend that is making, you know, we used to do that at school. You are praying and this one is doing this to you. Now you like, you are laughing. So you close the eyes. Amen. Sometimes during the service, I look at my kids. I look at them. Because I always, I know my girl, my girl will look at his brother and I'm looking at them. I'm waiting for you. So you guys are not praying. Amen. Maybe. But seek. As the word says, deep call unto deep. Hmm? It's calling you deeper. 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 It's calling you deeper, 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 deeper. It's calling you stronger. Everything that lives is meant to grow. You need to grow stronger. You need to go deeper as you pray. You can't be the same since you started praying. You never hear the voice of God. You never see anything. You never feel anything. You just pray. You're going to get bored and you're going to get to the point that you believe God does not exist because when I pray, I do not experience God. Amen. Christian, Christianity is also a relationship between us and God. Hallelujah. It's a relationship. So you need, the word says in Mark, is it Matthew 5 verse 6, the word says, blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty. Hallelujah. Of the righteousness they shall be filled. If you hungry, you qualify to get. If you thirsty, you qualify to drink. The more hungry, the more thirsty you qualify. The, the level of your hunger and your thirst will determine the level of what you will experience. Those who are hungry to experience God manifestation in their life, in their prayer life, in their ministry, that hunger is what takes you to fast, is what takes you to the mountain, is what takes you to do what others do not do. Amen. When I was at university, maybe Papa Len will testify. Sometimes you are hungry. 2 a.m. you are hungry. You don't know where the hunger comes from. You dress. You, you start wandering like a ghost there in university. You're just working there. You're looking for food. 2 a.m. You go to the market. Sometimes we used to say those markets are market of dead people. Can, how can really alive people are selling at 2 a.m.? Amen. Because you're hungry. You wonder. This food is really food. It's God's food. It's... it's I don't know. You just eat because you're hungry. When you're hungry, you go out. Hungry, maybe it's, it's a bit better. Smokers. Hey. Amen. Smokers. 3 a.m. There's no cigarette. They go look. They can even have their eyes down looking for pieces that somebody has thrown. They, they will light it up. If they see a smoker, they ask somebody they don't know. TB, they will get. What, what they will get. Amen. Why are we not hungry for God's manifestation in our lives? Through our lives. The more hungry, the more thirsty you are, the more you climb to the mountain, the more you lock yourself, the more you separate yourself, the more you read, the more you study, the more you fast. Why? Your hunger is commanding you. The level of your hunger. You know when you go to a party, they say it's a self-service. You see this guy, he put a mountain. 
between you and him, you don't even see each other because there's a mountain of food. That hunger. Amen. Let it also be something spiritual. You know how to develop spiritual hunger. What makes you hungry? What makes a normal person to be hungry at the end of the day? Activities. Isn't it? The more spiritually active you are, the more your hunger increases. Imagine if I eat even when I don't feel like eating. What, what am I doing to my stomach? Huh? I'm enlarging it. Amen. When I don't feel like praying, I pray. When it's not time to fast, I fast. When it's not time, I keep doing this thing. It's increased in me a desire. You will notice if really you are fasting since we started, if really you are fasting, you will notice one thing. You will find yourself praying during the day when you didn't play. You're just like, oh, brother, do you have and then say, what is happening to me? Why? Because you are on the fasting and praying mode. You are doing it so much that now you can't find, you can't find yourself a few minutes or hours without having, say, a prayer or having thought that way. Hallelujah. You must seek depth in prayer and results in what you are doing. Moses said to God, Exodus 33 verse 18, he begged God, he said, Lord, I beseech thee, show me your glory. Moses, I was with you in the burning bush. Moses, we went to Pharaoh. We struck him 10 times. We did wonders. Moses, I, sl I split the Red Sea. Amen. Pillar of cloud, pillar of fire. Moses, two times you came in my presence. 40 days times two. You and me only. You saw even my hand writing on the stone. The second you wrote, but the first I wrote. 40 days. You are not eating, you are not drinking. Me and you. Still, you want me to show you my glory. Moses, you have... Really, you know, when I look at it, I say, Moses, Moses is unfair. Amen. Moses is unfair. We have not even seen one person of what he has seen. Still, he wants to see the glory. Brother, if you see what Moses... Will you really ask God to show your glory? Huh? Hmm? You speak to God as a friend. The word says of God, when Moses entered the tent of uh, the meeting, when Moses get inside, the cloud comes and cover. They say, God has come. Hey. <laughs> and when they finish talk, Moses goes out and wow, God is gone. Hey, 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 you will respect me those days. You will pay me to speak to God for you. Amen. The prophet that you are paying today, I, they are not fleecing you. They are not getting money. Me, like that. Brother, one million rent. You are wasting my time. We're having an appointment with God now in seven minutes. I'll be late. You know he doesn't like me being late. Amen. You see him coming when I get there. You saw God striking Egypt ten times, splitting the Red Sea. Moses, why are they crying? move forward and Moses lift up the staff in the Red Sea wow people are taking selfie in the Red Sea as they are crossing I have one picture I have one selfie I'll show you in the group this guy is taking selfie with the the staff the shepherd staff he fixed the phone there he's holding like that Tata with Moses and you want to see the glory of God did you need to see enough in John 14 Eight, the man saw Jesus walking on water. He saw Jesus' transfiguration. He saw so many things. And he still says, show us the Father. This will be enough. Beloved, you must be hungry for more than that. You must be hungry to see the dead raised. You must be hungry to see the blind recovering the sight. You say, God, I heard about it, but I want my own. Am I talking to you? Hmm. So and so did so. And, me too. I want my own. I want to raise my dead. I want my cripple to walk. I want. When you are hungry, that increases your prayer life and your spirituality. Am I talking to somebody? 
let's close this thing today so that tomorrow we pray the last one you must pray until it happen huh you must pray until it happen you press until it break you press that devil until you, if it doesn't break you keep on pressing hmm? it doesn't break you keep on pressing until it breaks like a bottle why are you stopping praying mama Shalane, do you close the stove when the food is not ready you close it only when it's ready so why do you why do you stop praying when you didn't see the food ready amen you pray until it happened Genesis 32 the word says verse 24 to 26 hmm. the word says Jacob was left alone you see prayer he said everyone go today we're not praying together as family I'm praying alone he wrestled with a man with him until the breaking of the day and he saw the man saw that he prevailed not against he touched the hollow of his tight and, uh, and, 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 and and verse 30, 26 and he said let me go the day is breaking and the man say I will not let you go unless you bless me you don't bless me you don't go amen Amen. I don't see it. I don't stop praying. Unless God himself comes down and say, Felicia, it is I, your father. Stop praying. I have answered you already. Just worship me. Ah, okay. If not, Rapela. Amen. You pray until it happens. Elijah prays, go, nothing, master, nothing, nothing, nothing. You, you just said nothing. Yeah, master, but it's true, there's nothing. Okay. Master, I see something like a small cloud with the form of, he said, that's it. He prayed until something. Let us become prayer happiness. Amen. Uh, we pray until, we, when we see, say, okay, now we can change the prayer point. Next, what is the next? Next is the, okay, let's pray until it happens. Imagine you're an architect, you build a house, but you never finish houses. Who will give his house to you to build? No one. Why will I give you my, my problem to pray for me when I know you never even finish? You always forget. Not trustworthy to pray for things. Hallelujah. Hosea 12, verse 4. Jacob made up his mind. Blessing or nothing, but you're not going. Hallelujah. No matter what it takes, he had power over the angel. He prevailed. He wept. He made what? Supplication unto him. Prayer. Can you see? He prayed. You know, the level of resolution you pray with will tell how you will get, you need your answers. Your level of resolution as you are praying, it will tell how much you need your answer. Some people, the way they pray at church, you can say that this one is joking. This one, she's joking. She's not, she doesn't really not want something. She's just praying for praying. But those who want it, they are focused. They pray. They pray. They push until it happens. So let's stop dropping our petitions and go back to them. Even the old one, let's go back to them. Hallelujah. I want to close here. So that tomorrow we can pray. We can stand before the Lord's petition, fasting, focused during the service having overcome all the weaknesses and distractions and all these things and pray for her as long as we can pray. Somebody lift up, stand up with me and ask God, say, Lord, take me higher. 
Take me higher. Take me higher. Take me higher. Tomorrow is another day. Let the spirits of praise and worship prayer be upon me that I see.